This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Hi. We're going to be talking about the chapter on IES1, Presentation of Financial Statements. Uh, within the syllabus, you're supposed to know the formats of the balance sheet or statement of financial position and profit and loss, but we would not expect to see a big question asking us to produce a set of published accounts. So a lot of the time you need the formats, but probably just to be able to explain what goes where in a set of accounts. You can see that when you look through this chapter, again, we can see a example of a statement of financial position. By now, you are, I'm sure, familiar with things like the positioning of non-current and current assets and so on. The only thing I'd highlight from that statement of financial position is one little line within current assets, and it's this one here, non-current assets held for sale. You met this standard before in your studies when you looked at IFRS 5 in financial reporting. Remember, when you have fixed or long-term assets and you're definitely going to sell them, you reclassify them as current assets and write them down to fair value, less the cost of actually selling or disposing of them. If you've forgotten, you'll meet it later in our course notes. Otherwise, the balance sheet or statement of financial position is, as I'm sure you've seen before. On the following page, you've got the two performance statements. Don't forget there are two performance statements, the profit and loss, and then other comprehensive income. In the profit and loss, you're all familiar by now with the profit and loss statement, I know. So the only thing I'd point out is the equivalent of this point back here, assets held for sale. In the profit and loss, remember, you have to isolate the profits of any discontinuances. Again, that rule is from IFRS 5. So if you've closed a division or you're planning to sell it and it's held for sale, its results are shown separately in order to aid analysis of accounts because people don't want to know about what won't be there next year. So discontinuances, probably the only exciting thing in the main part of the P&L. Underneath the profit and loss is the other performance statement, other comprehensive income. And when you did your earlier studies, you didn't really think about this much, but this was used, you'll perhaps remember, for gains which cannot be reported in the P&L, like, for example, fixed asset or non-current asset revaluations if you revalue your PPE. So it is used for that, but you'll notice here that it's used for a lot of other things that you'll be talking about as you work through the SBR strategic business reporting syllabus. So you'll probably need to keep looking back at this. There's a fairly good list here of some of the major things that we see. So I can see that some investment gains end up here. Certain gains or losses on pensions end up in this statement. Um, one form of hedge accounting, you'll meet that in financial instruments, ends up here. And when you have foreign subs and revalue them for the movement in the exchange rate, again, it's something else that will appear in this other comprehensive income. You'll also see, as you look through the notes, that they'll make a distinction 
between these two yellow lines where where it, um it's just this one here actually there we are this yellow line here and this one down here they talk about reclassifying and that's rather exciting in some circumstances gains reported in oci are later reported in profit and loss or reclassified it'll all be explained in the notes all i'm saying at the moment is don't worry about it but when you get to it in the notes you'll need to give it some thought underneath the performance statements you've got the statement of changes in equity at the moment and i may of course be wrong but the examiner doesn't seem very excited about that i assume because investors are not very excited about it so i don't think you need to spend days worrying about that statement there finally a couple of points across the page companies must disclose accounting policies they have had a history of disclosing so many accounting policies that it runs into several pages that you don't really know what's important and what's not important so that's why the standard says you must disclose the policies that matter to investors you'll meet materiality properly in a later lecture but broadly things are material they could be material by number by size they could be material by nature because of the unusual transaction or sometimes you can have materiality where they over disclose and actually hide them so they put so many accounting policies down you can't decipher the ones that are really relevant and important so it's as much about over disclosure as under disclosure and of course if you look at point three sometimes if you talk to people and say i'm an accountant they might say you've probably heard this horrible phrase bean counter it's not true is it we're not bean counters we are michelangelo we are leonardo we are the great creators again of financial reporting so judgment is core to everything that we do and those key judgments must be disclosed again in the notes to the financial statements there we are that's it on that topic on IES one so formats and one or two associated points thank you